If you're a music producer obsessed with drums like I am, you're gonna to wanna to check this out. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can steal a drum sample from some drums you've already recorded if you forgot to take samples of the drums when you were in the studio. So I have a drum recording here and I wanna get nice clean samples of the kick drum and the snare drum. But if I just chop one out, we're gonna get cymbal bleed and all this other stuff, so it won't really be usable. So let's find a hit that we like and I'm gonna show you how we can get around that. Nice, I like that one, it's a nice strong hit. So now let's take that and make three copies. And these are gonna be split into different frequency ranges for the high end, mid range, and low end. And the cool thing about that is once we have them split, we can fade them out at different lengths. Most of the cymbal bleed is going to be in the high end. And lucky for us, we don't need a lot of sustain in the high end. So we can fade that out nice and quick. I'm going to grab an EQ that has a linear phase, and this is important because we're gonna be summing these back together. We're splitting them up into different parts, but we are going to be reassembling them into one sound. And linear phase EQs make sure that the phase doesn't change between them as we make EQ adjustments, and they'll sound correct when we put them back together. I like the FabFilter Pro Q3, so let's filter this up to about 3K. And now let's trim the length down a little bit and we'll fade it out to get rid of the cymbals in the high end. Great, now let's do the same thing to the mid-range. I'm gonna pick up where we left off on the high end at 3K, and I'm just gonna change this filter to a high cut, and we'll also add a low cut up to 150. So now we've just got the mid-range here. This clip I'm gonna leave the full length, but I'll adjust the fade so it's a bit more exponential, a little more steep of a curve. Great, not hearing any more cymbal bleed in the mid-range, so let's move on to the low end. So we'll need a single filter cutting off the high end, or a low pass, and we'll do this to 150 hertz because that's where we left off on the mid-range track. So that already sounds great. There's no noticeable cymbal bleed down there that low, so I'm just gonna make a little fade to make sure there's no pops or clicks. So now all we need to do is sum them together. So I'm gonna select all of these, I'll push Shift, option and click on their outputs and select new track so I can send them all to a new track. Awesome, we've got that sounding great and on a single track so it's back to one sound and all we need to do is commit that track export it, and now we have a clean kick drum sample that we can use in our song. And because it's from the day that we recorded, it's gonna sound perfect with the kick drum sound in the overheads and the room mics and blend right in. You can do this with other drums too, like the snare drum and the toms. You just may need to work your EQ a little differently depending on where you want those cutoffs to be and how much cymbal bleed there is or how much ring you want or sustain in the drum. So I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.